Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, Table Four. Hello. <coughs> Welcome to Table Four. <laughs> the party table two and one were garbage. They suck. <laughs> Way better. You guys need to step up your fucking table game. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have seen you in San Diego rooms. Right, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, so it's cool. Nice to see you over here. Yeah. So, talk about the adaptation we were talking earlier about. There's, it's a inherently got a lot of kind of fraught topics to it, and for bringing it to today's audiences, and to obviously adapt it so that audiences will, you know, kind of get some of the themes, but at the same time make it accessible. What were some of the biggest challenges for you guys? Um, well, for me, I mean, there weren't. I mean, there, look, there's challenges in any adaptation, but um, I've never had so much fun working on a show, I have to say, in terms of the writing of it. Um, because superheroes, especially in today's society, I mean, look, any good sci-fi is just a metaphor for something else. Otherwise, it's, like we all know, like, otherwise it's garbage. But really good sci-fi is because it's about something. And, and the superhero myth is so big and so sprawling now, and it's about so many things that you can use the superheroes. In, it was like an endless toy box. Like it just kept like, you know, we were like, okay, we're gonna use it to talk about politics. Okay, great, we're gonna use it to talk about the military. Okay, great, then we were like, wait, we're using it to talk about movie stars. And wait, now we're talking about talk about professional athletes and agent negotiations. <laughs> and like every single thing you wanted to poke fun at mm -hmm. works when you put a superhero in it in front instead of Lance Armstrong, Donald Trump, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, it all works. And so the world, in a bad way, has caught up to the universe of this show to the point where, in, in a very strange way, this sort of insane superhero show, I'm almost, I can almost promise, will be the most topical show on television. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> You want to add to that? Add to that I just really that? felt like your last comment was on point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I saw you tweet about directing the, uh, was it the finale? Yeah, the se yeah, season finale, yeah. yeah. I'm in the middle and of it the right now. And the last time that you directed TV was Lazarus Horizon. Correct. Now, I'm a huge Supernatural fan. Thank you. What was it like um, coming back into directing? after so long. Uh, I mean, that was season four. I know, I know. It's a long time ago. <laughs> you have, what? And we let you do the finale? I know, you let me do the finale. It's been <laughs> I, ten, thought, I thought you directed ten, half of Supernatural. It's been ten years since I directed. Uh, it's been, you're like Terrence Malick. You've I know. you like exactly. forming your knee, like, now right, I'm ready. Right. Uh, I, I'm so connected to this material, um, and I'm so, um, you know, I'm sure you can see I'm so obviously passionate about it, um, that it was really fun. I, I'm in the middle of it right now. I still have another week to go. Um, and I'm having a blast because I really love these actors. Um, everyone is really committed. Everyone sort of is quietly giving each other looks like they think, we all think we're making something. We're like, wait, this could be really fucking good. And you know, and everyone's really driving in and diving in with both feet. Um, so it's an incredible amount of fun. And I, you know, I have amazing DPs and editors and you know, they're surrounded people to make sure uh, to I also gotta say, counter my idiocy. He's <laughs> yeah. been a showrunner since yeah. the, you're like you're 20 percent the director of everything we do the <laughs> yeah, showrunner yeah, he's not bit. not directing as the showrunner yeah 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 well thanks th the, the directors would be furious i said that but it's yeah true, but. so yeah no but I'm, I'm having actually i'm having stupid stupid amounts of fun yeah uh so uh i think that can television like back to uh superhero shows so why did you want to make this story how is it different uh, besides thematically different, but uh, why the making the superheroes the villains is important now for the television uh, set? Well, I mean, like one of the guiding principles of the show is to kind of make it more grounded and more real in the way things happen, and it's one of the things that started Garth off in making this comic is like, in reality, they would be <coughs> fucking assholes, and they would be drug addicts, and they would be womanizers, and they would not be cool people. Like, people don't become super powerful and get friendlier and friendlier. And <laughs> and, and it, it just seems like it's the reality of superheroes that has never been confronted. Like, Iron Man was like an alcoholic for 20 minutes of a movie, and like, that was it. They didn't really, like, dwell in it, and he treats Pepper Pot wonderfully, and, and it's just not what would happen from most people's experience. So it's nice to just dig into this area that other people won't and can't because uh, they got to answer to a giant corporation. You have a large ensemble with this. Who's your through line character for this adaptation? But figure out that, that they're the best character to kind of 
Uh, two two characters, uh, Huey and Annie, who is the superhero Starlight, because mm -hmm. um, they're really the only two that have souls <laughs> in so many ways. Um, and so they and so much of the show explores the superhero world, even in a little more than Garth probably did, because you know, look, we're, we don't really write villains. What they're not villains per se; they're just real psychological characters who have been enabled their entire lives. So like when you're fucking Bill Cosby and all anyone does is turn the other eye when you do awful shit, you become an awful person. So that's how we attack these superheroes, right? And so, but then there's Annie who's the one superhero who really tries and cares. And so she's a likable guide through this hell. And then Huey, even though the boys are a pretty rough violent group, he's trying to hold on to his soul so you let those two kind of be, a friend of mine who's a very good writer always said, you want to have your, uh, Ben Edlund? Yeah. Who ben taught me, he's like, you always want your target of likable. Yeah. He's like, you always want to make sure you can land on someone you're like, oh, I like that person. Totally. <laughs> because then you can put up with a lot of madness if you can point to the people that you like. Yeah. So Huey and Annie kind of do that for us. I guess I'm going to take it this way. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.